to our EFAM joining us online all over the world. It is a special weekend for us. We are celebrating the faithfulness of God and declaring into the future that He's brought us this far, but we're just getting started. Touch somebody and say, This is not it. This is not it. So, real quick before we move along, uh, I had a dream, a weird dream. I, I blacked out and I dreamed that we were having church. And we were having church, and it was amazing, like always. In, in the dream, it was like it was our anniversary or something, and like we had just released this project called Elevation Collective. And all this weird stuff was happening that would never happen in, in real life, and just things that you dream about. And in my dream, I was, I was standing on stage, and, and you were all there, and then this guy comes out to preach, to take the mic and preach. On, on my anniversary, so that I didn't have to preach on my anniversary. And I was like, wait a minute, is that, it can't be, it can't be Pastor John Gray cannot possibly be here. Oh, it's him! Come on, welcome to the stage, Pastor Reverend Dr. John Gray. Let's have Go ahead and be seated. Go ahead and be seated. Don't do it, because I'll, I'll go right with you. Go ahead and be seated. Yeah. Revelation chapter 21 and 9. Revelation, Revelation, Revelation. I want to give honor to your pastors. 12 years of commitment, supernatural favor, excellence, ministry done with the kingdom in mind, a heart for the communities that they serve. Pastor Stephen Furtick, a revolutionary, a revelationary, a man of great vision, the most creative, forward thinking preacher, pastor in the world. We celebrate you and your wife, your children, your team this morning. We salute you. Happy 12-year anniversary, brother. Me and my wife, our kids, we love you. And all the campuses salute your leadership and the leadership of the team that you put together. We love you, sir. I don't believe in worshiping men, but I do believe in giving honor. Because God does the same, and if God thinks enough of someone to honor them, who are we to dishonor? Revelation 21, starting at the ninth verse, reading from the New King James Version. Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls filled with the seven last plagues came to me and talked with me, saying, Come, I will show you the bride, the Lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me the great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God. Her light was like a most precious stone, like a jasper stone or clear as crystal. Also, she had a great and high wall with 12 gates and 12 angels at the gates and names written on them, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Three gates on the east, three gates on the north, three gates on the south, and three gates on the west. I want to grab this scripture, the 12th verse. Also, this city had a great and high wall with 12 gates, 12 angels at the gates and names written on them, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. 12 is a big number with God. It's a big number with God. 12 is a big symbolic number. It's deep. It's, it's spiritual. It's, it's, it's all over the place. It's, it's 12 tribes. It's, it's 12 gates. It's 12 apostles. It's, it's, it's 12 months in a year. It's 12 hours in the day, 12 hours in the night. There's this revolution. Something about 12 changes things. It, it shifts things. Nothing wrong with 11. Nothing wrong with 10. Nothing wrong. 
Some of y'all like, I'm 11, what does this mean? I'm so confused, just keep living. You graduate high school once you get past the... There's something about graduating. 12 is a number of order, of, of government, of structure. It's, 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 a, it's a, a number that's symbolic of graduation. It's something is solidified when you get to 12. When you get to 12, you mean business. When God gets you to 12, now heaven means business. I want to speak from the subject, the 12th gate. The 12th gate. God's been looking to build something since this whole thing started. You can go to Genesis 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God hovered over the face of the waters, and God said, let there be light. It's strange because if he was creating the heavens and the earth and the earth was without form and void, there's two questions. If he was creating, how can you create when something's already there? Because there was water there and his spirit was there and the earth was there, but it was without form and void. So from the moment of creation until right now, God has been firmly establishing something. He's been trying to build something. He's trying to establish something. And today, we celebrate God's establishing of Elevation Church and what it means for the kingdom of God and what you all represent across multiple campuses, multiple platforms, and all of those who are watching online. There is a significance to today that cannot be overstated. This is not just a regular Sunday service. This is not just another weekend. There is something that has shifted in the spirit, and I need you to understand that this is not a time to be casual. This is a time for celebration because hell never wanted to see you get to 12. And I'm going to preach it like I feel it, and I'm going to do it in under 30 minutes. There were always shadows of what God was trying to construct in the Old Testament. Whether you look at the construction of the tabernacle, whether you see and understand that there were 12 tribes of Israel, there was always something that God was trying to build. And then, of course, we get to this New Testament iteration, this God man, fully God, fully man. He was 200%. This Jesus Christ, this Yeshua HaMashiach, this prophesied Messiah who many people thought would be a political figure to overthrow the Roman rule that had kept them oppressed. And Jesus says, I'm not really here to run for political office. I'm a monarch. I'm a king. I don't vote because I'm already on the throne. And so... For people who would try to minimize the cross of Christ to shade their political affiliation, let me help you to understand that Jesus is neither Democrat nor Republican nor independent because those are constructs of people who want power. And why would Jesus play with that when he already has all power? <laughs> Strange that Jesus, in his development and establishment of his father's will, chose 12 regular cats, just hard-working folk, dudes who knew how to get their hands dirty, not dudes who were sitting up getting manicures and pedicures, scared to get dirty. And I'm not talking natural, I'm talking spiritual, because for too long, we've, we have now been infected with the spirit of casual. We have been infected with the culture of casual. Everything's real casual now. People are casual with the things of God, casual with the presence of God, casual with the worship of God. We come in when we want. We leave when we want. We check our watch in the middle of worship. We check emails in the middle of worship, and God is like, y'all see, they need a miracle, and they worrying about an email, but if they just put the phone down and lifted their hands. A miracle can hide. Overflow in this place. God is like, it's so funny that you can, you can come in assuming a thing and miss the thing you came for. Because the culture of casual has infected contemporary Western Christian thought. And there's nothing wrong with being dressed casual. In fact, it probably helps you to get your worship on. 
You understand what I'm saying? Because you got on six girdles and four pairs of high heels. You can't really do what you want. You can't really get in there like you want. You understand? But when you come in here with your khakis on and you got your little situation and your Jordans on, you like, God, I'm coming for you. I'm coming to lift you up. I don't care what the person next to me thinks. I don't need a casual encounter. I need a miracle encounter, and I need it today. Jesus was establishing something. He chose 12 cats, 12 regular dudes, just 12 dudes. They didn't know who he was. They're just glad he was, hey man, you chose me, let's go, I'm rolling. <laughs> and of course, he, he's walking, and he's hanging out near Caesarea Philippi in Matthew 16. He asks these guys, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? And they go through this whole list, and then of course, one of the guys, Peter, says, you're the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus' response was, flesh and blood didn't reveal this to you. And I say to you that you are Peter, and upon this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell, which your pastor's already referenced. You've been in this, this Gates of Change series, and I wanted to try to stay in that realm, and nobody can preach it quite like the man of God that is the leader and pastor of this house. He's the most gifted communicator of this generation. So if you hear something that sounds familiar, it's probably because he's already said it. But there's something about 12, and, and Jesus was establishing the church. He used 12 guys, 12 men who were submitted to the purpose of God. 12 years is significant because we learned something about Jesus at 12 years old. Luke chapter 2, he's in the temple, and his parents are just in there. And I don't know how many kids you have to have or how much stuff you have to have on your mind, the Bible says that Mary and Joseph and those they were traveling with traveled, was it three days? Like, oh my gosh, where's Jesus? This is how you know they were white. Where's Jesus? Because black people don't let their kids stand right there, don't move. You better sit down, sit down, don't move. I wanna go play with the toy. Shut up, sit down. It's Black History Month, sit down. Black people are like, go ahead, Timmy, just run around and play. Just whatever you want to do, it's totally fine. It's fine. Look, a clip! He's so rambunctious. <laughs> How do you sleep two nights and your firstborn son, who happens to be the savior of the world, is missing and you don't know? How much grape juice have you been drinking? <laughs> Anybody seen Jesus? Me either. Turn up. <laughs> I guess Mary wakes up and says, oh my gosh, I thought he was with us. We gotta go back to Jerusalem. She, <laughs> she walks around the city. They finally spot Jesus. And he's exactly where he was when they left. It's a prophetic declaration because we've been running around trying to find Jesus. And he's exactly where he was when we left in the temple in the church, the local church. He said, didn't you know I'd have to be in my father's house? We got 45 million self-help books at the bookstore. And if they work, wouldn't that whole section be empty? But you cannot help yourself, nor can you change yourself. You cannot redeem yourself. and You cannot deliver yourself. You need that that, that, that boy that was in the temple, the 12-year-old that was sitting in there confounding the, the, the rabbis. They didn't even know what to say. They're like, where your mama? Get out of here. You're getting on my nerves. I don't understand. I don't know that question. He's like, well, I wrote it, so I know it. <laughs> Behold, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do your will, O God. I, he was the sum total of the word, staring at him in the face, and they didn't even know who he was. You can be in the presence of the 12th gate and miss the whole thing. Jesus 
was sent to establish the kingdom of God on earth. What's that? Um, in there, a prayer. It's like, our Father, who art. I thought his name was Art. Who is Art in heaven? <laughs> thy kingdom, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So Jesus came to manifest that prayer. So heaven comes down, eternity invades time, starts showing off all these miracles. But, but what is it that Jesus was establishing? He was establishing not just a tangible, physical kingdom. He was establishing a mindset where you understand that the kingdom of God is not just somewhere far off in the great by and by. This is not just a moment for Negro spirituals looking up for Jesus to come back. It's to understand that we are right now as he is, so are we in this world. And three people caught it, the rest are trying to figure it out. But the moment you realize that the kingdom of God is inside of you right now, you will function different, you will speak different, you will declare differently, you will, you will walk in a level of authority and power. You won't ask devil's permission. Excuse me, devil, could you leave my marriage alone? Could you leave my kids alone? I bind you in the name of Jesus. Get out of my house. Get out of my family. Get out, get out of my future. So Jesus was establishing the kingdom in the earth. And we get a glimpse of where we're going and actually not just where we're going, what's coming to us. Because when you read Revelation, heaven's coming to us. The new Jerusalem comes down from heaven as a bride. It's actually coming down here. It's really deep. So like, we'll go up and it's coming down. So we're going to meet him in the air. It's going to be great. It's crazy. That's why you got to get in shape because you can't fly when you're fat. <laughs> be the only one half raptured, just, just hovering. <laughs> I need more. Help Jesus. <laughs> just sweating and <laughs> like now. There were 12 gates to the city. It's, it's funny to me, when you think about heaven, you don't think about construction. You think about establishment. But the Bible says that each one of the gates to the city was made of a single pearl. It talks about the types of stones and the foundations of the walls. I'm helping you to understand something about 12, and I'm gonna get to you all in a minute because 12 years is no small thing. It's nothing to sneeze at. There's something significant about 12, and I'm gonna get to 12 in a minute because 12 is big with God. There were 12 gates to the city. When God wants to establish a thing, he gets it to 12. This is why you don't hear of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Esau. You should have never heard of Jacob. You should have heard of Esau, but, but God knew that Jacob would give him 12. I know we do high fives. Give somebody 12. Give me 12. I don't even know how you do it. Just figure it out. <laughs> Tell somebody, give me 12. It's, the, it's weird. Try it. <laughs> it's like... Jacob had the capacity to produce 12. 12 is a number of government structure order. It's, it's what God wants in our lives in every area. So why is Elevation Church seeing unprecedented supernatural growth? Why, is, why are people singing songs that were written somewhere in the woods of North Carolina where your pastor's walking around and I don't know what Holy Ghost he has, but I'd like that Holy Ghost because when I'm walking in the woods, all I'm worried about is mosquitoes and raccoons, but he's in there like overflow in this place. Probably got on this little shirt. Me, the love, it's my love. Your love surrounds us. I'm going to wear a little shirt one day. I, I really am. <laughs> Why would God trust a vision this big to a kid from Monk's Corner? Maybe because God knew he'd give him 12. 
somebody thank God that God can trust somebody? He's just looking for somebody that'll give him 12. Because 12 is, is a number of order, structure, government. I'm going to give you everything. I'll hold nothing back. My mind, my will, my intellect, my purpose, my passion, my present, my future, my pain, my scars, my flaws, my here, and my forever. I'll give them all to you. All 12, you can have it all. Is there anybody here that'll give God everything you have? If you're willing to give him at all, then you'll start seeing the kingdom established in your life. Yeah, I want to get to heaven, but I also want to see heaven. Right here, right now. That 12th gate. The reason why I want to talk about that 12th gate is because in Revelation 21, if you can imagine a construction project, imagine the anticipation of heaven while they were getting that last gate put in. See, there's something about the establishment of a city, and this is very important. In Old Testament Hebrew, the Bible shows us clearly in the Old Testament that the vulnerability and the strength of a fortress or stronghold always rested in its gates. The vulnerability and strength of a city rested in its gates, which means the enemy's gonna look for gateways. He always looks for gateways. He's not just going to attack your marriage head on. He's going to attack your insecurity, which is a gateway into your marriage. He's not going to attack. He's not going to attack your gift. He's going to attack your, your vulnerability or the area where you think you're disqualified. And he's going to hammer on that thing because it's a gateway. And you'll talk yourself out of your destiny because you'll see what you're not as opposed to what God said you are. The enemy is always looking for a gate. That's why you got to make sure that your foundation is set and your gates are established. Some stuff needs to be closed. Listen, I don't know about y'all, but when I was growing up, there are certain moments when my grandmother locked that front door and put that lock on. It's over. I don't care who, who you are. If you're knocking, you're not getting in. Read the parable. What was it? Ten, ten virgins. And they were all getting ready to go out. And they, the, the bridegroom was coming and they had their, their, their oil and all of this and knock at the door. I can't, hey, I can't get to the door. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not able to, to get to you. And, 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 and we're waiting for, for this, this opportunity to, to see God in a, in a new way. This, this idea of the doors being closed, the opportunity, you missed it because you were outside when the gate was closed. This idea of the 12th gate is God saying, I need you established, put in place and ready. And I don't need you moving. I don't need you church hopping. I don't need you trying to figure out if there's another church with a better sound, with a better vision and they won't let me serve. And I wish they understood what I carried and I got so many gifts and how come they won't let me sing? I got some tiny Hands. I can sing on the worship team. No, 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 no. This is not about gifts because God is not elevating gifts in this season. He's elevating hearts in this season. There's something that God is bringing to earth and it looks like heaven. That's why this church is so important. That's why this 12th year is so critical. Think about what's happened in the last 12 calendar months in this nation. And then look at the people sitting next to you and tell me how important this church is. Does anybody else other than your pastor catch what's going on? It took 12 years in North Carolina, which has not always been the bastion of diversity when it comes to worship. And it took a young man from Monk's Corner and his team to put together a church that looks like heaven. That means God is establishing something. And when you get that last gate in place, that means the city is established. That means God can start allowing things to come in that weren't there before. Because when you're under construction, some stuff he won't bring. That's a word for the single folk. God, where you going to send my bow ass? Where my rib? I'm a rib. God says, let me establish you first. 
But may the God of all grace who called us by his eternal glory through Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. God is constructing something in each one of us. There is a purpose bigger than our pain, greater than our past, greater than our fears, but God wants to establish his kingdom in us. So when his kingdom comes down, that means some stuff has to get out of the way. So there are some insecurities, there's some fear, there's some flesh, there's some old habits, there's some stuff that God has to literally move out of the way. This is the beauty of a construction project. When he's putting in one gate, he's got to get rid of an old gate. How many of us got some old stuff that we need God to get rid of? How many of us are still battling pl with places of offense? Somebody offends, you hold on to that thing. God says, let it go. You got to grow up. It's time to move on. I've got something to do. You too old. You 56 years old. That was 35 years ago. You've been holding it for too long. It's time to grow up. And you wonder why miracles don't break out because you've got a gate that's creaky. God's trying to help them creaky gates to get. Stop mending fences. Let him build a new city. I'm trying. She said, you better preach. Psalm 24 says this. The earth is the Lord's in all its fullness, the world and those who dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord or who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to an idol nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is Jacob, the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face. Pause. Selah. Then it says this, lift up your heads, O you gates. This is very important. He's probably already preached it in this gates of change, but this word gates literally means uh, stubborn gates or rusty gates or, or unmovable gates. It's, it's an ancient door. It's, it's literally saying, I've been here a long time and I'm not going nowhere. And there's some doors in our lives. There's some gates in our lives. They've just been sitting in there. They entrenched. They're rusted shut from the tears of our past and the salty wounds of, our, of, of, of the people that have hurt us. And God is saying, I need you to just declare, lift up your heads, O ye gates. I need, be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory will come in. What he's saying is, get them old gates up so the king of glory can come in, so the kingdom can be established. There's something about this 12th gate when God establishes his kingdom in your life in this 12th year. 12 years we celebrate the establishment of a church that looks like heaven. That's why this sound, this elevation collective, which we celebrate this weekend, is no small thing because in this nation, black and white still don't worship together unless, of course, For those who are seated, you remain seated. But for those who are standing, let me help you to understand the significance of what I just said. God has decided that the sound of elevation is a sound that can be trusted to introduce people to the presence of God. Let me ask you a question. Has anybody ever gone house hunting? Let me see the house hunters. Have you ever gone to a gated community? Yes. Now, unless you know somebody, you're getting ready to go somewhere. You have to have the code. And normally there's a security guard. His name is Earl. He's just in there. He's, I don't, I need, I need my identification. You ain't on the list. Now, I got to say this while you're standing because we're about to shout in just a second. See, because the Bible says in Revelation 21 that each gate had an angel next to it. Which means you're not just going to get into heaven. You can't sneak in. You're not going to be able to just break in. Nobody breaks into heaven. Nothing breaks into heaven. Only things break out of heaven. I'm getting ready to preach for like four and a half minutes. I need you to know that there's an angel by each gate just to let you know, like, please don't even try me. I'm, I'm hope, please, 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 come on, Cletus, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Nothing's breaking into heaven, only things break out of heaven. 
but we don't hear about the angels until the gates have been established. But the Bible says, once this 12th gate is established, then all of the kings of the earth and the people and the tribes of the earth bring their glory to the new Jerusalem. When you get to this 12th moment, this, this 12th gate, and I believe each year is a gateway because 12 months gives you another year. It's a gateway into the, the future, the understanding of what God wants to do because elevation, if God doesn't tarry, if Jesus doesn't come back, this church will be here until he does. And so the establishment of this vision is critical. You are a part of an ongoing legacy. But right now, we need to access the gate. I've been in places where somebody lived in a gated community and they were like, here's the code. You have to put the code in and the gates. See, but here's the thing about heaven. It's not a physical code. It's voice activated. Isn't it funny that in the 12th year of this church, the sound of the church it's going around the world. It activates, it ignites, it inspires. It causes people to get closer to God. Doesn't matter what you look like, but there's a sound that helps you to connect to the king of glory. Isn't that strange that I was in one place, I put in the elevation music, and all of a sudden, I'm through the gate. Now I'm thanking God. Wait, now I'm praising him. Wait, hold on. Wait, the music, I hear it, the gate opens, I'm thanking God. Wait. Okay, enter his gates with. And then I'm in his courts with. So the music is actually the gateway. I thank him because I hear the sound, and now I'm praising. I'm in his courts, and I'm not in the outer court, I'm in the inner court. And then I get closer, I'm in the Holy of Holies. Now I'm communing with Jesus. 12 years. 12 years God has established this church. And see, so you guys get to live it. You get to come in here in this beautiful campus, and y'all, y'all have multiple campuses. You have, what is it, 45 campuses? And you know, you got everything. I want to go all of them. You know who you are, all of y'all. How y'all doing? How your mama doing? Good. Tell her I said hi. Here's what's funny. Between Revelation 21, between Matthew 16 and Revelation 21, Jesus said the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. The word gates in 16 symbolizes and in Hebrew means prison, the gates of hell, the prison of hell. But here's what's funny. It's not a prison that's fixed. It's a prison that expands. Wow. What Jesus said is I need somebody who will work with me to establish the 12th gate. Because when I get heaven on earth, that means it stops hell from expanding. Elevation stops hell from expanding. When we get in position, every campus, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 10, 11, 12, 45 campuses, every camp, wherever there's an elevation campus, it's establishing the gate of heaven, saying you can't have this territory. And when I go over here to Asheville, you can't have this in Melbourne and Uptown and wherever else. In Raleigh, Roanoke, Rock Hill, Toronto, University City, Uptown, Matthew, Morrisville, Raleigh, Lake Norman, Gaston, Columbia, Concord, Blakeney, Asheville, and Valentine. I've only got a few minutes, but if you're in here, your presence here says we are the 12th gate. Say it, we are the 12th gate. We are the established kingdom of God. We will not be shaken. We will not be moved. Right here, right now, we declare here as in heaven. I don't think y'all realize right in here is where a sound needs to rise up. Because heaven is not just sight. It is sound and it is substance. It's not just what you see, it's what you say. And what you say carries weight because of him who established it. I am the 12th gate. And here as we celebrate 12 years, I celebrate a church that has become a gateway 
for people to come in from the cold, from the painful judgment of religion without grace, from the painful place of being profiled for the things you've done wrong. But you can come in here, get healed, and get connected, and be celebrated for who you are, as you are, where you are. That is the beauty of this church, and it looks like heaven because Jesus didn't ask me to be perfect. He asked me to be truthful because they that worship must worship in spirit and... Is there anybody in here that understands that right here, right now, you can give a praise that establishes the gates of heaven? So what if there were 11 gates and your praise was the 12th gate? How would you praise if your worship established the kingdom of God in the earth? Can you give him a 12th gate praise for a 12th year anniversary? Hey, thanks for watching. Two things I want you to do. First, click our logo to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a single video. Second, you can click the Give Now button to support the ministry and we'll be able to continue reaching people all over the world. Thanks again for watching.